Hey AB, it's Kristen, and today I have a brand new painting project for you. This is another one of our art box projects. So if you've ordered an art box for May, this is what you got in the mail. You have um, the sample, directions, paper, there's sketch paper, there's final paper in here. You'll get two sets of paints, so all the paints are already in here. There's Q-tips in there. You'll also, also, also get your brushes and pencil as well as a little water well and um, a little piece of paper towel to dab your brush on and some white paint. So if you didn't get an art box but you want to do this project, that's what you're going to need. You can actually do this in any medium. So if you want to use oil pastel or a watercolor or even marker, you can follow along with the drawing lesson and then color this in any way you want. But we're going to start out with the drawing lesson. So I like to do a sketch before I go onto my final paper just to practice. So if you have your art box, get out your sketch paper. If you're feeling gutsy, go ahead, go for it on the final paper. That's fine too. But I'm going to do one sketch. And then what I'm going to use is the sample printed art that came in the art box um, for my painting part. And to break down this peacock, we're going to start with the head. So I want to just make an oval shape somewhere in the composition, not too big. So everything we look at, anything we ever want to draw can be broken down into shapes and shapes are just lines and curvy lines and straight lines making connections. And we can all do that. So we should be able to make this peacock. I'm going to go across the top of the head and I'm gonna curve around and down. So you could even make um, a flamingo this way. It'd be kind of cute. And then I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing and curve. So if you make a mistake or if you don't like a line you made, like I wanna make mine a little bit wider always just add lines especially for this project i'm going to be using a tempera paint or a, you can also use an acrylic paint but when you're using paints like that they're really opaque so you don't really need to worry about any mistakes you made the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to make a guideline that goes across the face and it's also going to tell me where the beak is going to be so i'm going to go right through the middle of the face and out this is just a guideline that's telling me how long my beak is going to be from the face so you might look at it and want to make yours a little bit longer or shorter and that's why we make it first we don't just jump into the beak and then kind of regret the size we made so I'm gonna come along just looking at the sample art here and come back onto the face so the beak isn't sitting on the outside of the face it's actually like in here so I have the beak on there but I haven't finished it off I'm just going on to the face and then I'm going to add some curved lines in here to complete where that beak is gonna be and anytime you're making a bird you want to do that you want to bring the beak on to whatever that shape head you have there and then lucky ducky me the line here is gonna show me right where my eye can go so I'm gonna add a little circle here for my eye you want to you can add kind of like an almond shape around it a little curve i'm looking at the sample here maybe curve around that to kind of mark out where i'm going to leave the white just like that so once i have the head and the body i want to start adding the tail feather so first i'm going to just come back behind and i'm going to give myself an oval shape just to kind of tell me how high I want the base of the tail feathers to go. So it's okay that I crossed over here because that's gonna get covered up. If you're doing a sketch or a watercolor, you might wanna erase those lines. Then from here, I'm going to do lines radiating out. So think of making like a sun. You don't want all of these going the same direction. And even though it's behind the bird, they should be fanning out. So they're going out, out, out from his body. Boop, 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 boop. Done. So peacocks have these cute little like feathery headdresses on. And so I'm gonna add some lines out of the top of his head. 
Um, even baby peacocks have those little, I should look up what those are called. Maybe if somebody looks it up, they can email me and tell me what they're called. They're so cute when they're tiny and they have this little tiny little crazy hair piece on. So I'm just gonna add a couple little dots on here and then we're gonna paint those with Q-tips so it's gonna look all feathery and bumpy. Along the big tail feathers, I wanna add these oval shapes. So they're actually on the whole length. I'm gonna add another one here of the feather. So I wanna just kind of have some high, some low. And always, always make it your own. I can have some kind of going off the page that always adds more interest. So some half circles here. And inside of each of these ovals, you're going to add some smaller ovals and then going towards the circle. So kind of like concentric ovals. I guess exactly like concentric ovals. Inside, inside. Then getting smaller, 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 inside. And you can do these one at a time or you can do just like I am and add the little ones as you go. Little, 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 little. And that's pretty much it. You can add any details you want to for your peacock, but this is a, just a simple way to break down this drawing to this project's drawing into a step-by-step -step, um, drawing lesson. So if all you wanted to do was draw this, what I would say is go back and erase all those lines that kind of crisscross through, clean it up a little bit, add a little shading to it, and you've got a pretty cool sketch. But I'd like to paint this project. So I'm gonna take my art box insert that had my sample in it. I got to have the big sample today too. And I'm going to go right in here and Miss Susan usually throws the printed version right inside the box. So this is kind of cool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this up here. So stack it pop it up here. This is already on final paper, so it's really nice and thick. It's going to be great for my thick paint. It'll also be great um, for um, not too wet of a watercolor. Awesome for colored pencil, oil pastel. This is great paper. So I'm going to go ahead and grab out my paint. So they're all packed. I'm just going to pop the lids off of them. If you are at home and you're pulling out colors, I have teal. I have green, so it's like a nice Kelly green. I've got a blue, which is more of an ultramarine blue, if you're into your colors. And then I have this beautiful copper. The white I'm going to leave until the very end, so I'm not gonna open my white right now, I'm just gonna let it stay there. But I have that color set aside. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to go around and think about working background to foreground. So traditionally, um, in any kind of art project, you want to, especially when you're using very opaque paints, you wanna work background to foreground because you can always cover, you can always cover any kind of mistakes you make in the background. We can hide any like little flaws. So I'm going to start with my teal and you can mix colors too you don't have to do it any particular way i'm going to put a little teal on my palette so just like that teal and i'm going to start by just making these teal circles in the background so in your box you should have two brushes should have like a like a little skinny skinny and then a little bit bigger one I'm going with a little bit bigger one because I know I can cover some of the teal and I don't want to leave a halo behind so that's kind of big So 
So just filling in, filling in. So this sample has all the little feathery parts drawn in and they're there just to help kind of direct me. But drawing it, you didn't need these. So if you're worried that we didn't draw those, we don't need those for the painting because we're gonna fill those in with a brush. And you don't want a ton of extra pencil lines in the background that you're dealing with covering, especially when you want like really soft brush strokes. So don't worry about that. And don't worry about these kind of scalloped feathery effect. Um, if you are doing um, this in colored pencil or oil pastel, you might want to add that feel to it, but we're going to do that with paint. So don't, don't worry that we missed a step. We're okay. I'm going to take a little bit of this teal and switch brushes. And I'm going to add it to the face. So just bringing that paint right along there. Yeah. I'm going to move over and grab a little bit of green out and I'm going to let that blend a little bit with my teal. So I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm going to let a little bit of teal go into this Kelly green right here and really have fun with mixing colors. You don't have to use these on their own. You can blend all you want. That's what the plate is there for. And I'm gonna just do like another loop with that Kelly Green. my small brush because I was just using it but really either one works great just remember if you want a wider line like I've got a pretty wide line going with my brush I'm just pressing down a little harder with that brush the harder I press down the thicker my paint lines are gonna be so you don't need a ton of paint brushes at home you really just want to learn how to control them do a lot with just a medium sized brush. So I've got these nice wide ones going. Let's see. Here. I always wanted a pet peacock, but I think they're really noisy. Okay, so I've got my Kelly Green, I've got my teal, and I'm going to rinse my brush, and I'm gonna do one more area before I add some of my feathers in. And you can go back and forth with this because we're the background, we're just setting this all in, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some copper. And for this, I'm just going to arc it on that one bigger oval and the reason I'm doing this is I want a little bit of that green to mix in with my copper so I like that kind of combo if you don't want it to mix then maybe wait till it's dry but I think it's kind of fun to get it in there Drop a little bit of copper in there. I'm just gonna give this composition a nice sparkle. Right in there. Did I miss any? No? Good. Okay. 
So I'm gonna set that brush aside. So I'm using temperas and I don't have to worry too much about my paint drying really quickly. If you happen to be using acrylics, really make sure you wash your brush out in between. It's pretty important. So I'm gonna go back with a little bit of my copper on my palette. I don't, so I have it on my palette. I don't wanna dip into my main copper because I'm gonna be using that in a minute. But I want to mix some of my green, some of my teal, and some of my copper to make all these beautiful loose feathers all the way up um, each piece. So I'm just gonna flick my brush like I'm making a palm frond. So from each center, and that's why I was saying like you wouldn't necessarily wanna draw these um, if you're gonna paint them. And it's okay if you go over here, but I'm just gonna flick, 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 flick back and forth to create this feathery effect. So if you feel like you need a little bit more of one color or the other, just add that to your palette. I really like the copper in here. I think it gives it that sheen that you think of when you think of a really beautiful peacock. So I live fairly close to um, Leo Carrillo Ranch, which is in uh, North San Diego County and they have peacocks there and every year they have peacock babies adorable and they have these beautiful male peacocks that walk around with these feathers spread really really wide and they're just magnificent so so much fun so these should just be really feathery and pretty. I'm going right over his little headdress. If you pick up a little bit of color in one of those, no big deal. I just want to fill, fill, fill this whole area up. So this should be just fun. Let those colors blend. And you'll find if you put several colors on your brush, if you just give it one stroke, generally those colors will Kind of rainbow out wherever you put them. The more I paint across or the more I would stroke that paint, the more the colors will become blended. But if I just throw it in there, whoo, then I have that really pretty variation. I'll just use up the rest of my paint here, throwing those in. So we can go back and add detail and we will to the tail feathers, but that's just kind of setting the stage back there. So we filled up that area. It's looking really beautiful and gorgeous peacock colors. The next thing I wanna do is I want to do the head area. So I'm gonna start with the top of the head and then we're going to work with um, the Q-tips. If you're just at home and you're using brushes, you can use your brush, you could use the back of your brush, you could use your fingertip if you wanted to. Get back into finger painting, that's kind of fun. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just use this dip, dipping in right into my blue and I'm just going to give it these little dots. So this is gonna give it that really nice feathered effect and create that definition on the head. So I wanna go right up to the teal. And I can always touch up the teal later. So if you go a little bit over, don't stress out, don't try and fix it right now. Just let it dry and then touch it up later. You might even find that you like it going over just a little bit. So you can see that it creates this little, like little tiny feathers on its head. So I wanna keep these really small, but as I move down the neck and as I move down towards its body, I want these to be a little bit bigger. So all I'm gonna do then, instead of going dee, 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 tiny little dots, I'm gonna use a little bit more of the side of the Q-tip and let these start to get a little bit bigger looking. So I'm gonna come down to about here and then I'm gonna stop 
and I'm going to grab my um, little bit bigger brush and I'm just going to start to brush up from here. So down here we'd want bigger feathers because the body is getting bigger and wider. So think about that like that would be the bigger feathers towards the tummy. So I'm going to start down towards the bottom. And then I'm going to work my way up. Okay. So I'm going to leave a little bit of this for right now. We're going to come back to it. Because I'm going to want to add some more of those details. But I'm just going to add this kind of feathery feel. You can go either direction. Maybe you like that better. Play around and see what you like better. And we're gonna add a few more of those tiny feathers towards the back of the neck just to define that space a little bit more. While I have my blue Q-tip still sitting out, I'm gonna go ahead and add these little center dots. So I left a little bit white. You could fill those in all the way. So maybe don't leave any white if you don't want to. But I like the little bit of white in there just because it has a reflective feel to it. If you really don't like to leave the white of the paper then fill it in with blue. You can even add white paint later. Looks like a bunch of eyes. Woo. Okay, so back to my copper paint. I'm gonna go ahead right from the jar still. This is nice and clean because I only pulled a little bit of out onto my palette before. I'm gonna fill all this in. Just being careful because we're gonna go back over the neck a little bit. I'm being careful not to go too much onto that blue because this has a lot of that kind of yellow oh I got a little blue it has a lot of that yellow kind of undertone in it it might start to make a brownish color or a greenish color if you get it too mixed in this is kind of orangey so orange and blue are gonna make brown and Yellow and blue are gonna make green. So you just have to be careful. So I want this just filled in. So you can kind of make it feathery like before. I got a little blue in there. I'm just gonna make it a happy accident and I'm gonna work it down where I'd want it to be a little bit shaded behind his body. Boom, cast shadow, done. That's not so bad. So that is gonna dry a little bit and we're gonna go up and we're gonna flick up this copper on that little head. Boop, 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 boop. Again, just a really light touch with that brush is gonna make a really nice thin line. And then I'm gonna go in the beak. Same thing, just go really easy and gentle and you'll get that teeny tiny thin little line that you want to have for the beak to get right up to the face and then this is kind of drying I'm going to come back and I'm going to take my brush again and I'm going to just da, 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 Okay, so I'm going dit, 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 all on the top of that cute little headdress. 
Really probably should know what that's called. Sorry. I do like peacocks. And then I'm going to add some blue and some white just in here. So I think I want to make its eyes blue. So I'm going to add with my Q-tip a little dot right in here. So for the eyes, because it's so detailed in here, you could go back later when this is all dry and use a Sharpie to outline the beak and outline the eyes and make them a little bit more detailed and that would look really good. Um, you're gonna probably want to use something fine like that because it's really hard with something that small to take your tiny little brush and get the eyes on there. That's like an easy, fun way to make it look a little bit more um, realistic. And you could always go back with that Sharpie and add details too to the peacock itself and that would look really cool. But I'm gonna take my um, white and I'm gonna put a little bit on my palette because I don't want to risk making all of my white a new color. Eek. Okay. I'm getting really messy on my palette. I am makeup like oh, really messy palette. So I have my Q-tips. I have most of my colors out already, but I really want to focus on the blues and teals and white for this tail feather. So I'm gonna dip my Q-tip into the teal and then I'm gonna dip it into the white. So it has a little bit of both. And I'm just gonna start to experiment on here. So I'm gonna dot and then, oh, that's kind of teal. So I might add a little bit of white. And I'm just gonna start to fill all of this in. And just create like a texture. Let's see, try some bigger ones. You can always practice on your sketch paper with the paint too, just to see what you like best. It doesn't hurt to mess around on something else, especially if you're really invested in this painting, you might wanna try that out instead. But these colors will um, kind of reflect a little bit of that copper and just create a really nice texture back here. I'm gonna try a little bit of that dark blue. Oh, that's fun. I like that. So this is where you make it your own. It shouldn't look like mine. It shouldn't look like Miss Susan's. It should be just your peacock tail. So I like to think about like where a highlighted would be or where a shadow would be and I'd like to create a little bit more depth by creating those contours. So I think I'm gonna leave it a little bit lighter there and then come in a little bit darker here because I think that the body would be making like a shadow on those tails. Maybe that makes it feel a little bit, um, like it, there's a little bit of perspective in there. And then um, the only other thing I would do if you've made your eye blue is take the back of your brush. So the back of your brush is your very best little dot maker. Dip it into the clean white paint and add a little shine mark dink, to the eye. And that's just like a fun way to create a little spark, a little bit of life. And you can actually, if you want to, add it to these two. And that's gonna add a little bit more interest, a little more shine all over the peacock tail. So again, always, always, always make it your own. This is a really, really fun project. If you have other colors at home and you wanna add purple or anything to this, go for it. Make it beautiful. And I hope you enjoyed painting with me. Please um, tag us when you're done. Post your pictures and share them with us. I love, love, love to see what you guys do. So have a wonderful rest of your day or evening and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.